guys welcome back to a to z dentistry and today we will be studying about concrescence in detail so let's get started so starting with the definition it is the form of tooth union wherein two or more teeth are united by the cementum below the cej that occurs after the root formation is completed now this kind of a thing basically occurs when two teeth are united by means of their either roots or at somewhere uh, at the level of root trunk but it occurs below the level of the cemento enamel junction now as we can see in the pictures below right two teeth appear to be united now we might think that what is the cause of such an anomaly so we will be learning about the etiology in the upcoming slides moving on to the etiology of concrescence now the most common etiological factor is developmental so it might occur as a type of developmental anomaly right uh, the second cause is inflammatory now in cases of this kind of inflammatory cause we must remember that whenever there is any kind of periapical infection of the milk tooth now such kind of infection might you know stimulate a kind of response in the periapex and this might lead to some or other kind of developmental anomaly within the permanent tooth so inflammatory reason is definitely one of the cause of concrescence the third etiological factor is a traumatic injury now in the event of trauma what happens is that the permanent tooth bud might get displaced from its original position right when the tooth bud are developing they are very sensitive to any kind of trauma and any kind of traumatic injury may predispose to concrescence now in cases of a traumatic injury there is an impact on the milk tooth and we know that by the means of the roots such impact is transferred to the developing tooth bud which is present in between the roots of the milk tooth right so this kind of a thing might lead to concrescence apart from it the next etiological factor is overcrowding now we know that in cases of overcrowding there is little to no space for the teeth to erupt now what an, uh, what happens is that in such cases the two teeth might become fused in order to erupt in the oral cavity there is a very little space so basically by means of cementum deposition the roots of the teeth might get united leading to concrescence moving on to the last etiological factor that is the distal inclination now what happens is whenever there is a distal inclination for the tooth always there is a uh, some or other kind of cementum deposition in excess that occurs now because of this excessive cementum deposition what happens is that the roots of the tooth which is lying adjacent to the tooth which is getting distally inclined may get fused together and going by the definition it is basically the fusion of two teeth below the cej by means of cementum so distal inclination of the tooth might serve as a etiological factor for concrescence moving on to the types of concrescence now basically concrescence can be divided into two types the first one is two concrescence and the second is acquired concrescence now in cases of two concrescence it happens if the roots fuse during the developmental stage now as we have previously discussed whenever there is a trauma to the milk tooth right the developing tooth bud might get displaced leading to concrescence so when the etiological factor is related to milk tooth either inflammatory or traumatic now then such kind of concrescence will be referred to as two concrescence the second is acquired concrescence now obviously if true type of concrescence occurs during the development this will occur after the development now this might occur because of overcrowding or because of distal inclination of the crown moving on to the clinical features of concrescence now basically it occurs equally in both the genders the ratio is 1 is to 1 for male to female the site and area so basically it is more common in maxillary second and third molar region primarily because of the distal inclination as well as chances of impacted wisdom tooth are more so basically in especially in, in the third molar region we can find concrescence apart from it either primary or permanent dentition might get affected and there is fusion of the roots of the tooth by means of cementum moving on to the clinical significance of concrescence now because of such kind of a anomaly the teeth might fail to erupt or erupt incompletely within the oral cavity right apart from it such kind of anomaly may predispose to malocclusion as well as impaction 
moving on to the radiographic features now clinically we might not be able to figure out concrescence as it is very difficult because as previously discussed such kind of union is occurring below the level of cj and unless and until there is a significant gingival recession we will never be able to see below the cj clinically so definitely an iopa is very necessary for one to diagnose uh, concrescence now within the iopa we can easily find there is a union between the roots of the teeth right so here i have put up two pictures the first one is an opg now here uh, we will be able to appreciate that in the maxillary second molar there is a concrescence right the roots appear completely fused right so this is nothing but concrescence in the second picture we can see that the two molars are there and they are been united by means of their roots right and this is definitely occurring at the level of mid root and below the cj now these two roots are united by the cementum hence radiographically we can easily you know see concrescence however it might be uh, a bit of tricky task to differentiate it from overlapping or from you know superimposed tooth for that we can go from sir other uh, advanced modalities like ct and all okay moving on to the diagnosis now clinically it is very difficult to differentiate between fusion and concrescence so what happens is that this fusion can occur anywhere along the surface of the tooth however concrescence occurs below the cj as previously discussed but unless and until there is a significant gingival recession we might not able to see the cj so clinical diagnosis may not be able to certainly tell us right whether it is concrescence or germination so we must opt for radiological diagnosis and after undergoing radiographical diagnosis easily we can see that there is a union between two teeth with the help of cementum below i have put up you know two oh, radiographs clearly we can see that there is you know union of the two teeth by means of cementum right and the roots of the teeth appear completely fused with each other so moving on to the management part so basically a dentist must be very careful while doing any kind of periodontal treatment endodontic treatment or you know extraction of such teeth mainly because we uh, have to understand here that we are risking two tooth right there is not only a single tooth but there are two teeth which are been united by means of cementum so if we have to undergo extraction of such teeth or any teeth we must you know take an iopa so that we can able to find out if at all there is anomaly associated with the tooth now in case of concrescence if we try to remove a tooth which is you know which has got concrescence as an anomaly so what will happen is that unnecessarily the patient will go extraction of two tooth simultaneously because many a times clinically we might not able to see if at all there is concrescence present or not as it is that these are united below the level of cemento enamel junction so when we try to extract supposedly first molar then the second molar also might get extracted so we must take up a radiograph prior so that we can rule out any such anomaly in case of a periodontal treatment when we are undergoing scaling with such kind of patients what happens is that as they are united by the means of roots below the level of cj the scaler might get engaged within the deep focation areas and it unnecessary might lead to tearing of the layer of cementum and then hypersensitivity the patient might complain of hypersensitivity in such cases now in cases of endodontic treatment we have to understand that because there is a deposition of heart tissue at the level of root what happens is that endodontic treatment becomes very difficult because we are supposed to put up you know small files and everything inside a very small canal or if at all there is any kind of anomaly within the shape of the tooth the file may not be able to confer or negotiate the canal properly therefore leading to severe endodontic uh, treatment problems mishaps and failures so what we can do to prevent is the foremost thing here is that we must take up an iopa uh, of any tooth before undergoing any kind of dental treatment right so this is a kind of a uh, precaution which we must take from management point of view we need not do any kind of treatment in such cases only that we have to be extra careful while planning any kind of dental treatment for such patients because of the reasons i have already mentioned 
so there is no particular treatment which has to be undertaken by the patient for this kind of anomaly because it possesses no harm there is no detrimental effect on the dentition so we will not treat such a case however we have to be extra careful with such patients while undergoing any kind of dental treatment so that was all about concretions in detail i hope you find this video informative and if you like this video don't forget to like share and comment thank you see you next time bye bye